worship him today. You know, some people didn't wake up this morning. Yeah. And he woke us up and he gave us another opportunity to come into his house yeah. and to lift his name upon high. Amen. Yeah. So let us stand and let us welcome God into our service. Amen. Yeah. Oh, you know. 
Manny in your prayers. Amen. 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 So um, announcements there are on the back of your bulletin. Um, pretty equivalent to last week, St. Nebo on the 21st. The address is in the bulletin starting at 3.30 p.m. They are feeding us as well. So once we arrive, we can eat good before we go into worship service. Amen. Amen. Um, also, we are still um, have our sign-up sheets for church picnic April 20th. Four dollar donation. See me if you want to go and you need to give me your four dollars. Also, our Indiana Beach trip um, in June, fifty dollars per person at your admission to the park, as well as your ride there and back. Amen. 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 Uh, pastor's anniversary. Yeah. Amen. For our very own assistant pastor, Donald Fuquay, will be bringing forth the word. Amen. Amen. Remember any love offerings that you want to give to our pastor and our lovely first lady who gave us that warm welcome this morning. Um, you can see any of our ushers in the back, they have those envelopes for you as well. Amen. 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 Church, we've come to, to the time in our service. Everybody can participate. Amen. Amen. Everyone, you know, everything we have is because God has blessed us. Nothing's ours, it all belongs to Him. He's blessed us. All right. All right. This is a time in our worship where we can give back to God, saying, thank you, Lord. And as we go into our ties and our offering time, amen? amen. Now I'm going to turn it over to our ushers.
Son of Christ, we give all honor and praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in our devotional period as the choir leads us in another song. Amen.
We all go out through something. We all sinful. We yeah. just ask you to look through and give us encouragement to keep holding on, Heavenly Father. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this church, the head of this church, our pastor, mm -hmm. Pastor Woodall, and the church family, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we got some sick and the children, Heavenly Father. Well, and we just ask you to go by be and, with them, and be with them. Yes, and Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to go by the bereavement, Heavenly Father. We ask you to go by the, the, the incarcerated, Heavenly Father. Yes. Well, Heavenly Father, we ask you to go by the people that are sick uh -huh. and they don't want to come out. <coughs> but Heavenly Father, we know that you got some angels. Yes.
He is definitely worthy. You know, everything that was created was created with us in mind. If you notice, when you go to Genesis chapter 1, and you start reading when God created everything, He created everything and then He created us last.
And the Lord is so real. Yeah.
as we read the word of God, I'd ask that you stand. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, read as follows. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever, and ever, and ever. Amen. Amen. The grass withers and the flower thereof fadeth the way. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. Verse 9 says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven. All right, all right. Hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. As a title for this message, I want to use these three words. Father knows best. Amen. Father knows best. Jesus said in this text, he says, as he is teaching his disciples, those who have gathered on this mountainside, and the master is speaking to them. Y'all, he's not just speaking, he is preaching to them. He is, there is a difference. You see, speaking is me just saying something usually just something that I want to say. But preaching is when I am just repeating what God has already said. Amen. If you're preaching, you don't add to it, nor do you take away from it. Amen. But here in this text, God himself is preaching All right. what thus saith the Lord. The Lord. Amen. He, he's, he's preaching and, and as he is preaching and thusly he is also teaching those who have gathered he is, he is telling them when you pray pray this way. Amen. Use this as a model. And then he started out and, and he said this when you call on him Address him as Father. Yeah. <coughs> Address him as our Father, mm -hmm. who are in heaven. heaven. All right, yeah. As I was beginning my sermon preparation, and I knew where I was going next, he had already laid it out. All I had to do was just sit down and take the time and, and listen to what it is that he was saying. And, and, and when I found that quiet moment that you sit down and, and it's me and the Lord, I, I pull open my Bible and, I, and I'm reading through the text. Uh, and, uh, and, and I start reading and, uh, and I get to the part where he says, our Father. And the Lord says, stop right there. Amen. Look into that. Stop right there. Because what the Lord is doing, he, he, he's, 
He's defining himself. He's defining himself for our benefit. He, he is defining who he is. Uh, and, and the question then becomes, it becomes what, why? You have to ask this question. If you're going to study and go deep into God's word, you, you have to ask a lot of why questions. Why did he choose to do it that way? You've got to ask. You've got to ask the question. Why fatherhood? Of all things that he could have done as he was defining himself, why did he define himself in a familial sense? That which pertains to family. Why did he use terms that express fatherhood? I mean, he was starting with a blank slate. A, 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 a blank slate. He could have done anything. He could have said anything. He could have done it anyhow. But, but he could have chosen any way to do it, but he decided to use the concept of fatherhood to define himself with us. It makes you wonder sometimes how, God, how does your mind work? I mean, I've looked at some things that you've done, and it just makes me wonder sometimes, Lord, how is it, I don't understand how your mind works. How did you come up with the concept of when? When? I mean, when you were creating, when you were putting everything together, when you were orchestrating your plan, what popped up into your head to make you say, I think that I'm going to create something that they can't see, but that they can feel. You can't see, but you can see evidence of it. You, 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 you can't touch it. But it can touch you. All right. All right. It can be gentle and refreshing. Mm -hmm. But it can also be powerful and destructive. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Who, who, who thinks like that? Yeah. What was God thinking when he created an act? Well. <laughs> <laughs>
And there's so many things that I'm going to miss about mom. Mm -hmm. All right. And one of them was well, banana pudding. I'm not talking about the banana pudding that we used to get in school. Intention. 
original and efficient God use that word. In a world that's filled with sinners, the world has a base of sinners. Uh -huh. And of those sinners, yeah. he is looking for those who will voluntarily choose to become his children. Yeah. Uh -huh. And of those who agree to become his children, then he's looking for those who will also become his disciples. Right. Who will actively walk like him and talk like him and learn to live like him and learn to love like him and love to forgive like him. Yeah. And of those who become his disciples, then he's still looking for those who will become active in ministry for him. He could have set that process up in any kind of way. Yeah. For example, he could have used another paradigm. God could have, as he was establishing his, defining himself, establishing who he is, he could have used a corporate paradigm. Mm -hmm. he, he could have, uh, uh, um, uh, he, he could have declared himself not to be the father, mm -hmm. but as the CEO. All right, all right. All right. He could have. Uh -huh. He could have. The, 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 the model prayer then would have started out. Our chief executive officer, yeah. <laughs> who art in the divine corporate headquarters, Be thy name. Yeah. 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 His, if that were the case, then his, his focus would be to, to lead us in a path to personal and organizational productivity uh -huh. and guide us to being all that we could be, the best, the best employees that we could be. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. You see, his world then would not have been dealing with sinners, but he would see people uh, uh, as potential customers, mm -hmm. as a target market. And from the target market, then he would pull out those who would become customers. All right. And of those who would become customers, a few would go on to become employees. And from those who were employees, then he would pull out a couple of managers. There's some advantages to being the boss. If you are the boss, right, right. everybody does what the boss says. <laughs> the boss tells you to jump. <laughs> You just say, well, ah. <laughs> Even better than that. Just <laughs> jump. But, but, they're, they're, but there's a reason that people do that. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a reason why people will, will go to work when the boss says, come to work. Yeah. There's a reason that people will uh, not go to work when the boss says, don't come to work. There's a reason why. Here's the reason. Here's the reason. Uh, uh, every single one of us who has ever been an employee, we, we realize that you are one big mistake away from being unemployed. <laughs> Just one. Just one, one, one good one. You get one good one, and you ain't got no job. You, you, you don't have a job. You, you're just one big mistake away from being unemployed. Uh, 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 you, God will not fire you. Well. Okay, God is not going to fire you. Right now in the world, you are constantly under the threat of being fired, but God won't fire you. In, instead, he, instead of calling himself your CEO, he said, I am your father. Amen. 
which are in hell. Yes. He won't fire you, but he will work on you. Yes. 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 He'll, he'll, he'll work on you. Uh, and, and look, the Father is forgiving. Yes. Boston won't give you a second chance. Well, yes. But the Father is Forgiven. I, I know he's forgiven because I've messed up way too many times. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, 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 uh, and, and here's the thing. Once he's the father, he's always the father. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter how many times you mess up. It doesn't matter how mad you make him. A father is still going to be your father. Right. Uh -huh. And he's not going to stop being your father. Uh, but, so I'm glad that the Lord didn't use a corporate paradigm. Yeah. He could have also used a governmental paradigm. Instead of saying, our Father, which art in heaven, he, he could have called himself the president. Right. I'll be the president of the world. Our president, which art in the West Wing, <laughs> of the heavenly presidential mansion. Mm -hmm. Hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. And he'll lead the land to, to peace and prosperity. And instead of being a, a, a world full of sinners, we would be a world full of constituents. And the desire then is to attract you to the party. The party of believers. As opposed to the party of non-believers. But some would go from the party and then not just being in the party, but we got to get you to be a voter. Uh -huh. I need you to be a voter. And then some of those who were voters would then be on the president's staff. There's advantages to being the president. Uh -huh. If you're the president, you've been granted an incredible amount of power and authority to rule and reign over the area that you have responsibility. Right. Uh -huh. But there is a problem. The, the, the problem is that you only have power and authority as long as the people are with you. All right. All right. All right. And when the people are not with you anymore, you lose your power. Yeah. And you lose your authority. That means that you're going to have to make sure you keep the people happy. Amen. You make some promises that you probably can't keep. You kiss some babies that you ordinarily would not have kissed. You associate yourself with some people who are not necessarily your friend, but they're politically expedient. But instead of saying, our father, or, or, or the president, he, he said, I'm your father. Your father, which art in heaven. Y'all, you see, for a good father, a good father, a good father's power and authority are not dependent on your happiness, not dependent on your satisfaction, and not dependent upon what the polls say. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because such as his love always outweighs your comfort and your pleasure. Uh -huh. His love always outweighs your comfort and your pleasure. Look, look, my dad told me this one time. He said, he said, son, if you want someone to tell you you're right, go to your mother. <laughs> but if you want to hear the truth, Come and see me. <laughs> you know, look, 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 he, his love for me outweighed his desire to make me comfortable. It outweighed his desire to, 
to give me pleasure in, in things. In God. Uh, Daddy never lost any power. He never lost any authority in anything. Even as a teenager, a teenager who was full of himself at one point in time. Daddy never had to worry about a military coup coming from me. Never had to worry about an uprising or a revolt coming from me. Never even once with the door open. Now, behind closed doors, I had all kinds of revolts. I, I, I said all, what I was going to do, what I was going to And one time I remember, I, I remember I, I got a little bit too boisterous in my, 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 my behind the doors conversation. <laughs> and mom opened the door. What? And the uprising was calm. There, there was no, there was no problem. Uh, 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 I was a bad brother when the door was closed. Okay. But, but the God that we serve is omniscient, and He knows all things, and and so there's absolutely nothing that you can tell Him. I'm so glad that He did not set things up on a governmental Amen. paradigm. <laughs> Finally, he could have he could have used a sports paradigm uh -huh. and declared himself to be our head coach. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord's prayer would start out by saying, "Our head coach, <laughs> who art in the divine locker room, <laughs> hallowed be thy name," mm -hmm. and he would lead the team. Lead the team to a winning season. <laughs> and there are advantages to being a good coach. <clears throat> if you're a good coach, if you're a good coach, no, people will work hard. You can find people who will work hard. They will work hard to get a spot on the team. They, 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 they will sweat. They, they will put in long hours. They will sacrifice their free time. They will sacrifice their family time. They will, they will put everything else aside and they will love every minute of it. Uh -huh. You don't have to prompt them to come to practice. You don't have to prompt them to come to rehearsal. You don't have to prompt them to do things. They're just, they can't wait to have the opportunity to get together to do the thing so that they can be on the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's okay. It's okay to be the coach as long as you got a winning season. Because <laughs> yeah. right. fans are fickle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fans are fickle. They, they, they're with you when you're winning. But don't ever forget that as a coach, you are easily replaceable. You, you're replaceable with the next good thing that comes by. The next good opportunity that comes by. The next good person to come available. When you're winning, when you're winning, they will have ticker tape parades for you when you come into town. When, when you're winning, folks will run up to you and ask for your autograph. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but if you start losing, yeah. I've heard, even right up the street, you have a bad play, and even your own fans will boo you. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, there are way too many fair weather fans. Too many farewell fans, and life has too many ups and downs for me to be comfortable uh -huh. having a sports paradigm. Instead, the Lord said, our Father, which art in heaven. You see, a coach is replaceable, but who would fill in for an omnipotent God, a God who has all power? Who would you put in his place? Who would you put in the place of a God who knows everything? Uh -huh. Who do you put in his place? 
Who do you put in the place of an immutable God? A God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And instead, he said, our Father. Because a real Father will do anything for his children. He'll do anything for his children. And, 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 and a real Father, this real Father, wouldn't even withhold his only begotten Son. Amen. So you got to understand that if this was a sport, the final score would be fixed in our favor. All right. Just because of who your daddy is. Amen. If, if, if this was a government, understand that the election would be rigged just because of who your daddy is. If, if this was a corporation, understand that you would have an unfair competitive advantage because of who your daddy is. Because, y'all, we win. Yeah. If you didn't know it already, know this today. We win. Right. Then the outcome is already determined that we win. I know because I've read to the end of the book and I, I know how this thing winds up. We win. We win because every day the Lord places you in a win-win situation. Yeah. You see, to live is Christ and to die yeah. is gain. Yeah. If I live, I wake up with an opportunity to train him and to worship him and to tell somebody about him. But if I die, yeah. when I die, yeah. I have the opportunity to go and to be with him yeah. forever more. Yeah. I win. We win. <laughs> because he wasn't looking to recruit employees. Jesus didn't call him a president because he wasn't looking for campaign votes. Yeah. Jesus didn't call him a coach because he wasn't trying to build a team. Well, he called him our father because he wanted a family. He wants a family. A family of those who would voluntarily Choose him. Yeah. Voluntarily choose to worship yeah. him so that he could spend your eternity spoiling you. Amen. Yeah. God wants to spoil you for eternity. He, I know he wants to spoil you because he told us, eyes have not seen, yeah. ears have not heard, yeah. neither have they entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them who love him. So, Lord, if you want to spoil me, who am I to get in your way? Spoil me, Jesus, with everything that you have. I want to spend my eternity loving you. I want to spend my eternity serving you. I want to spend my eternity honoring you. I want to spend my forever with you. Why? Because not the coach, not the president, uh -huh. not the manager, mm -hmm. but Father knows best. Yeah. Father.
and uh, and I, I have a special prayer request for our church body. And I'm asking Sister Burnell and Kaylee, would you all come forward? Amen. Reverend Burnell. Some of you may know, and others you might not know, that Reverend Burnell is a candidate uh, to pastor New Garfield. And, and, and here's the thing, in this process, uh, as, as any candidate and the family goes through it, and they go through as a family, uh, you only want one thing. There's only one thing that you want, and you only want to be where God plants you. Amen. You only want to be where God plants you. And so uh, God will speak to, the Holy Spirit will speak to that congregation. They will speak through that vote that they will take eventually. Okay. But while we are going through, that we want Reverend Burnell and Sister Burnell and Kaylee to be able to experience this journey that God is taking them through. Whatever the end may bring. I, I don't want to be praying against them. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I truly want him to be wherever God desires for him to be. And so we want to go to the Lord. And make sure that as they begin taking these steps on that journey, that, that his church family, his home, prays with him that the road that he is about to go down be one that leads to what God would have him to be. My, my prayer is that somewhere, whether it's here or someplace else, that he gets to experience the joy and the challenges that come with being an under shepherd. Amen. Okay. Amen. Okay. And, and if this is where he desires him to be, then we are blessed because he's just down the street. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So if you all, if you want to stand with me, and I'm going to pray for you right here. Right now. come to you, Lord, right now, Father. We come with great humility before you. Lord, you are a good God. And you desire so much that your children learn who you are, know who you are, Father, and then work to be who you have called them to be. And Lord, you have called Reverend Burnell mm -hmm. to be a mighty mm -hmm. man of God. Yeah. You have blessed him with a wife mm -hmm. and a daughter yeah. who love you. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we're asking right now, Father, yeah. that as they begin this process, as you take them through, mm -hmm. we're asking you, Lord, to proceed them every step of the way. Yeah. Lord, that they feel your presence every step of the way. Yes. And that when the day comes when you will call, Lord, if he's in that number, yeah. I'm asking you, Lord, to strengthen him yes. and to continue to encourage him. And Lord, that you would bless his wife, uh -huh. that you would bless his daughter. Yes. And Lord, that this family unit will be drawn closer yes. as a result of the work that you have put before them in ministry. Uh -huh. And Lord, if it be your will, Lord, we will praise you, yes. glorify you, and honor you. Yes. We love you, sir. It's in the precious name of Jesus. Jesus, who is the Christ. We ask these and all of the blessings. Amen. 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 Amen.
the, one of the good things about what we do is that we come in here and we get filled up. The Lord gives us blessings. And we feel and, and are filled with joy and, and, and we can feel love. And, and, and we get filled up with that. Every time we come in, we get another heaping helping of his love and forgiveness and trust and honor. So since you know he has a good track record of always giving it back, then what you got this week, go out and give that to somebody else. Amen. And, and, and in the morning time, my Bible tells me that his mercies are new every morning. He'll fill up your cup all over again. And so share it with somebody. Be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. Amen.